Complex scientific research comes with communications challenges. Words mean many different things across disciplines, and stakeholders have distinct communications needs. Storytelling can help translate some of the main concepts in your work that you're trying to get across. My name is Lisa Palmer, and I'm the journalist in residence at the National Socio-Environmental Synthesis Center. I write stories about science and the environment and social challenges of a changing global environment. At Succinct, I help research teams think about how their findings can reach beyond the academic bubble. In this video, I'm here to share with you what I've learned in over two decades of working in journalism by discussing what a story is and why it matters. I'll tell you about the five key elements of a story and tips for translating your research into stories. This tutorial is part of a larger effort you will undergo to design a strategy to share your research. Stories appeal to emotion and reason in a way that theories and generalizations do not. Some people might try to say the story is climate change, but climate change is an issue, not the story. Composting as a way to remove greenhouse gases from the air, to reduce climate change is a story. Your goal as a researcher is to convey accurate scientific information to help people update what they know. Stories can help your audience understand your scientific information in a way that a list of facts or a scientific paper might not. Stories can provide context and emotion and appeal to a different part of the brain that helps people remember and care more deeply about a subject or issue. This doesn't mean that a story is inherently better, but it is more likely that an audience will find meaning in what you're trying to convey. We've covered why a story is important, now we'll focus on how to tell compelling stories. All stories have five key elements, a beginning, conflict, resolution, protagonist, and antagonist. Something needs to happen at the beginning of the story that makes you want to find out what happens next. In other words, a hook. Socio-environmental research is often full of ambiguity and complex ideas that you may not even know the full extent of. But if you start a story with that perspective, your audience won't make it past the first paragraph. How you begin a story is critical. It introduces your audience to the central idea or theme and convinces them to keep reading or listening. When I write stories for Nature or The Guardian, I try to start with something very specific and concrete, a small detail that plunges readers into the heart of the story grabs their attention and compels them to read further. Ideally, it should be colorful and dramatic, personal and intriguing, and it should have a certain emotion to it so that it reflects the atmosphere of the rest of the story and not just the information it contains. Sometimes the beginning of the story is the most difficult element to get right. Remember, you don't have to reveal everything in your beginning, but you do have to introduce the audience to the components that are relevant which may be your protagonist or the conflict, historical context, or connection to a notable event. More on characters in a moment. Think about the big stone ball rolling after Indiana Jones. You have an incentive to pay attention to see what happens. You think he escapes because he evades the ball, but then the guy takes the treasure from him, and you realize there's a conflict that's going to happen. Adios, senor. The second element of story is conflict. There needs to be a conflict in any story. Conflict should be easy to identify. It's the reason you're doing this research in the first place. We know wildfire events are sudden extreme events that impact humans and ecosystems. But do wildfires lead people to making new decisions to adapt to and reduce the risk of wildfires in the future? This is the heart of storytelling. Introducing conflict in the story gives the audience a reason to stay engaged and to learn how the problem is resolved. This leads me to the third element of story, resolution. Conflict allows the audience to ask, what will happen? Resolution needs to answer that. In an abstract or scientific paper, typically the resolution is your research. 
However, I want to challenge you to think beyond that and consider the audience carefully. What about your research is important to the audience? Why is now the best time to be concerned about this issue? Why should they even care? These questions cut deep into the heart of your research. But if you can answer these with your resolution, you're going to have an inspired audience. The fourth element of a story is that you need characters. You need a protagonist. Who or what is the main character of your story? The protagonist might be you or a member of your team, or it might be a person who is affected by the problem you're trying to solve. People like stories about people. It's how we relate to the world around us. When we can see ourselves in a story, we're likely to develop more empathy for a solution or a problem. The thing to consider when identifying your protagonist is that the character needs to change over time as the story moves from beginning to end. If you are the protagonist of your own story, how are you changing as a result of this research? The fifth element of the story is the antagonist. If you have a protagonist, you need to have an adversary in the story. This doesn't always mean another person, but the antagonist should represent a roadblock or a barrier that your protagonist is trying to overcome or learn from. All great stories have these five elements in them. They're pretty easy to identify. Sometimes what happens though is people forget to think about their stories with these elements in them. You're telling true stories about your work and so it's not likely going to be as dramatic as Indiana Jones. Still, you'll often be able to make a compelling story of your science without misleading or overstating the problem. Now that we've covered the five elements, here are a few tips to consider when writing your story. Novelty. What is new and surprising about your research? If the topic isn't necessarily new, what about your angle is novel or fresh? Passion. People are curious to know what it's like to be you. Why spend all of your time on this subject? What does this level of dedication reveal about you? A story can help make your science more relatable. Mystery. The goal of telling a story is to have the audience clinging to each word. What clue will you reveal next? Along these lines, it's important to consider what to leave out. With a story, anything that draws your audience's attention away from the central point, well, that's not something you want to keep in. This might include jargon or obscure references. Nobody knows your research better than you, but a story will help other people find meaning in it, too.